on the map. This is Ron Costa broadcasting live from the Mappable USA studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. And today, folks, we're going to talk about blockchain. We're going to talk about some of the, 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 the craziness involved in it. We're going to send you some resources. We're going to get you in. We're going to tell you the truth about this whole industry, and you're going to really love this, I think. If, you're, if you don't know too much about it, you will after this podcast is over. So before we get into that, let's introduce Vicki Hutchmala from the World Token Market. Vicki, how are you doing today? As always, Ron, I'm fabulous, although it is a little bit odd in Vegas today because it's in the 70s and a little bit rainy, which is unusual, but then <laughs> next week it'll be 104, so we'll be back to normal. However, today, at this moment, we, are going, we're, we have a guest that we've never had before, and we're going to let everybody know the truth about blockchain, and that blockchain is so much more than Bitcoin or Dogecoin, and we're going to let everybody know how to use it from an expert. So let's get started. See, if this was a video podcast, Vicki, I would play the, the Jack Nicholson, you can't handle the truth thing. But since we're just audio, <laughs> we'll just pass that for now. Instead, let's introduce uh, John McCunis. He's the founder and partner of, actually the founder of uh, Power of Chain Consultancy. John, how are you doing today, over there today? Uh, it's Friday. I'm feeling great. Things are going fabulous. I'm in South Florida and uh, ready to rock. Blockchain is blockchain <laughs> is is actually uh, the movement here in the Miami Fort Lauderdale corridor or in South 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 Florida. In fact, is on the rise and it's getting a lot of momentum. Yeah, well, South Florida is the place where everything happens. You got all the celebrities and all these crazy people going there when when they start talking blockchain then I think uh, everyone should know about it because it's just a matter of time before everybody figures it out, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> interesting, Ron, just real quick, more and more developers in Miami are, are accepting crypto for payments. Um, these are on larger deals, but uh, there's Bitcoin is being accepted on a couple of brand new ma- launches here in, my, in Miami. So uh, you're gonna, we're going to be hearing more about that. Yeah, we're going, to, we're going to get into that a little bit into the podcast. But for now, uh, John, why don't you uh, give our audience a little bit of background on yourself and, and you know, how you got interested in the whole business and how you got to be where you are right now? Yeah, great, Ron. Thanks for that question. Um, I'm going to condense uh, 35 years into a few sentences here. I have a commercial, mainly a commercial real estate background over the last 30 years. Uh, I've been uh, working in different countries as in real estate. I lived and worked in Mexico for six years working as a real estate broker on special projects with, uh, with large uh, international companies. And I also lived and worked in Brazil. I'm going to circle back to that in a second because that will lead into where I, how I got into blockchain. But, uh, so, uh, so my background has been mostly that, commercial real estate, working for, uh, for developers, working as a real estate broker myself and in the mortgage industry up until 2011. Oh, the other th- important thing to mention is I worked, I was in a VP with First American Title, title insurance industry, for several years, and uh, I was the VP for Latin American Expansion for title insurance. Wow. Yeah, yeah so it, it sounds like you know real estate uh, front and back. You've had a lot of experience in that, and now you're seeing real estate go to the blockchain and everything. And, you know, before this podcast started, we talked about how there's little misconceptions about blockchain, specifically how it relates to cryptocurrencies and vice versa. Uh, Do do you see that a lot with with people? Do they they not understand exactly what the blockchain is as a backbone for this whole, uh, you know, industry? Oh, man. Uh, You opened up a can of worms there, Ron. You know, I I run across most of what I – who I talk to, are mostly people who don't know about blockchain because that's where my part comes in in terms of education and and getting business for my little company. So there's a huge, huge misconception and a huge misunderstanding of what blockchain is. You know, uh, from consumers to business leaders and to government leaders, you know, uh, know, and it reminds me of a story. You you remember the, the story of the blind men and the elephant? Go on. Well, there's business leaders and government leaders who, you know, we know they look at blockchain, they study it for their respective companies or their respective government agencies, but they seem to come away with a different and sometimes negative narrative of what it's worth. And it reminds me of the story, the blind men and the elephant. So you have a group of blind men touch an elephant to learn what it's like, right? Each one feels a different part. 
but only one part. They conclude the elephant is like a wall, a snake, a spear, a tree, what else? a fan, a rope, depending on where they touch. The blind men do not quite understand the whole of the elephant. So this is what I think. Some business leaders in government uh, people don't quite understand the whole either, the whole blockchain value proposition. Now, these people, though not blind, one may touch the end of the elephant's trunk and conclude it's not scalable. One may touch the elephant's side and conclude it uses too much energy. One may touch the tail of the elephant and conclude it's unstable. One may touch the rear end of the elephant and conclude it's just a bunch of elephants. Hmm. <laughs> elephant there you go. And oh, so this, is a story, this story is replicated around the world in many, in many industries, uh, it, it, and, and a lot of the misconception is we, I say we in the industry, don't do enough uh, education, I think. I think that's absolutely what you, yeah. correct because so many people think bl- uh, blockchain is Bitcoin or Bitcoin is cryptocurrency, and that's the whole industry. But Bitcoin is, is more of a commodity where blockchain is a tool to do anything and everything more securely and uh, with a lot more finesse. And I think, I think you're right that and until you can educate more people about the reality of blockchain and the potential, everybody's going to, just like touching the elephant, everybody's going to come away with a different idea and not know how wonderful the whole elephant is. Yeah, yeah. And, and how long do you think that's yeah. going to be? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think when you, when you talk about the tipping point, right, of when things will tip or turn in the favor of mass adoption, it's, I think the answer is different, Vicky, for different industries. Um, the finance mm-hmm. world is, 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 I think, is leading it. Um, there are other industries that are lagging behind. Uh, but the industries that are great use cases for blockchain implementation is, is healthcare and certainly real, the real estate industry, without a doubt, across the board. Exactly. Uh, but so, so uh, real estate industry is, is, is not quite uh, up there yet. Uh, we're not quite up to the tipping point with, with any industry, and especially healthcare and, and real estate. But so, if I had to give you a time frame, uh, I hate doing that because it's forecasting through a crystal ball. But my crystal ball says uh, I think probably in about three years we'll see more mainstream acceptance of blockchain uh, implementation and use uh, in, in in these industries, healthcare and and, and in the real estate industry. I think well, yeah. I, I would agree with you within that time frame. And, and you know, uh, another aspect for uh, use of the blockchain is with government. Blockchain can be, easy, well, not easily, but can be adapted to run a government infrastructure and, and do it in a way that doesn't involve any kind of political machinations that, you know, we're so used to, but just kind of keeps it crisp and clean. Yeah, well, I think the, the, the problem, with, problem or challenge with government, uh, you know, in a broad sense is uh, they're used to their legacy systems, um, so they're happy with them, I think. Uh, there's bureaucracy, mm-hmm. uh, with, uh, there's politics, uh, there's politics involved in, in, in moving to new uh, innovations or, or new technologies, without a doubt. There's ignorance, uh, we talked about that, there's ignorance of what blockchain is, how it works. Um, and there's uh, somewhat in, in, inertia, okay, to yeah. move forward with blockchain. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, you know what they call people who have ignorance of, of blockchain, right? They're called elected officials. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, they're not going to do a movement. That's, that's for sure. They're, they're safe in their little bubble a lot of times. But, you know, you talked about real estate, uh, John. Uh, how, how does blockchain work in real estate? How, how does it work? How does tokenization work? What's the benefits of something like that? Okay. Let, let, let's step back up just a second. I'm going to give you three or four buckets where, where blockchain fits okay. into the real estate industry. Uh, one, is, which is my focus, which I mentioned in our pre-call, uh, is the land registry or, or county recorder's offices. That's been my focus. Um, that's one bucket. Uh, the other bucket on the private side uh, is uh, the transaction, trans- 
uh, blockchain used for, for the whole transaction, from the, from, the, from the listing of the property to the closing. Everybody's on, on chain. The appraiser, the property inspector, the, the, uh, the, uh, um, you know, the mortgage company, the, the, the notary. So that's another aspect. And we have seen companies go uh, focus on blockchain for transaction use. The third bucket is, uh, to is the hot one, which you mentioned. The hot one is tokenization, fractionalization of, of real estate. Um, that's the third big, bu big bucket that we're seeing a lot of action in uh, in terms of startups going into that space. Um, unfortunately, the bad news, there's not a lot of examples of buildings being tokenized across the world. Yeah. So, yeah uh, when you it's talk, still, when you, it's yeah. still so new. Well, when you talk about Thank the startups, you. Are, you talk, are you talking about startup companies that are actually software as a service to create these tokens, or are you talking about developers who are starting their own uh, businesses and trying to uh, raise money to build their projects? Uh, when I say startups, I'm referring to uh, the blockchain technology startups who are uh, building, up, building platforms out for tokenization of real estate. Um, and we're seeing uh, they're increasing. There's more and more of them popping up. I'm advising – uh, two right now, one's in uh, uh, in Australia, and the other is in France. Um, but with tokenization of real estate, um, these there's two types of, of platforms. One is a straight up company or platform that will tokenize an asset for a real estate developer or an owner, and uh, and now we're seeing I think more and more interest in providing a a a, a, a um, Companies that will offer a, sort of a a company that will offer a white product, you know, um, to uh, offer uh, their service. They offer their service, and you, they will sell it to an individual or a company, and that person can then use that platform. So white label product, right? Uh, right. Uh, uh, white label to tokenization. So there's a prominent company that's doing that now as well, or trying to. Right. So, so as an example, let's let's take a developer who wants to build a, a high-rise building, for example, right? And he's looking to raise $100 million to make it an easy number. So he's got $100 million he needs to raise. He decides he's going to go via tokenization. So now he, he gets on some kind of a tokenization platform, creates the tokens. They're worth X amount of money, right? Does, this guy still needs to have an offering documents, right? Investors aren't, aren't just going to go there and, and give him his money. He still needs documents, though, doesn't he? Uh, he's got to have a lot of documentation, prospectus. He's got to have a good legal team because of, of the of the scrutiny of the SEC and, and there's right. the regulatory issues. A uh, good chunk of money that goes into startups or, or startups or people who are into tokenization uh, are on attorneys. Quite frankly, um, that's 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 really important. But a real estate developer who wants to do that tokenize a building he is planning on developing uh, it is really one of the main focuses of, uh, of, of, of tokenization and what the value of the crowdfunding it can offer to, to, uh, to not only a real estate, Ron, not only a real estate developer that's developing, but maybe he's got an existing asset, uh, which is, let's say, fully leased. He wants to tokenize 80% of it, offer equity in it, create the tokens, the fractions, uh, reward the investors with uh, monthly or periodic, you know, revenues from the rental, rental stream. Right. And he can yep. raise money for a new project, raise money to pay off debt, and so forth. So that's also another key aspect of it is, is, is that part of it. I, I look at this, but and it, I, it, I see a no-brainer that, that this should be done. It, it, it makes so much sense, especially from a, a liquidity aspect. It, 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 it raises the question, you know, why, why aren't there been more deals out there at this point? I mean, is it because the developers are weary to get into it, or is they, they feel that the investors are weary about the blockchain in general? I, I just don't understand it. Yeah, you think it's, it's a no-brainer, but I, still, I think we're still so early in the game uh, in terms of blockchain awareness for this and, and uh, of the startups that are doing this. Uh, they're, they're all out there educating people. They're all out there educating developers. Um, and I've had them on some of my, my panels, my webinars that I do. Uh, you mentioned it, you used the word no-brainer. Um, that's true, but uh, it is. But there, there's a couple of things that come into play. One is... Uh, two questions, actually. Uh, where's, who's the target market? Who are the investors for this? Because you know, a lot of them want to you know, ramp up global, the small-time global investors from the mom and pops to the taxi driver to, so they can participate in the big commercial project. And the second question is, um, are, is based on the regulatory 
issues and legal issues. Uh, so there's, there's still, I think, it depends on the jurisdiction and country, there's still some impediments to making this a, a transparent mechanism for crowdfunding uh, and, and so on. The third aspect, Ron, is uh, the, uh, for the tokens. Right now, there's not, there aren't many exchanges where someone can take their token and exchange it or sell it or uh, transfer it to someone else. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's an impediment as well. We have to have exchanges. We have to have exchanges that are in interoperable and international for, to exchange tokens. So there's three issues there. Well, and plus, you know, aside from the education to let people know uh, the potential, you, you have to adjust the mindset as well from something traditional that's kind of tangible that you can see the real estate, you can see the investment, you can touch the money, you can that, to something a little bit more ethereal that is kind of out there and different. So until you can educate people on what it actually is and change the mindset to why they should use it, in addition to making it safe, which blockchain primarily is, it's right. you know until you can until you can conquer that area, it's even though it's a no brainer, it's not a do it yourself project. You can't just say, okay, I want to tokenize this thing and then boom, it's done. You need the expertise to help you along the way, and and those people also need to be educated on how to make it work. So. It's a more of a daunting thing, although it's something that, that will happen in the next two, three years. It'll be much more mainstream then. But at this point in time, people just are afraid. Everybody's afraid of the unknown when nobody else has done it before. Oh, hey, exactly. That's for sure. You hit the nail on yeah. the Yeah, exactly. Here's, here's the challenge. Yeah, here's the challenge. Who has been doing who, – who has been tokenizing – real estate. Show us the examples. Show us what you did, when you did it, and the results. You ask that question of the, of, of the companies that are doing this, they don't have an answer because they're really not doing it quite yet. So once we start to demonstrate with, the, with, with these examples that a building in New York did it, or a developer in LA did it, that then you'll see, that's when you see the, uh, the tipping point in, in the two to three year horizon of, of adoption of tokenization. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that yeah, makes it, sense. It because, a little tangible. Yeah, as soon as you have a project that works, yeah, if you show a project that works, then all of a sudden, like every other business, your phone starts ringing off the hook because everybody wants to know how you did it and how they can do it. But I do commercial real estate here in Las Vegas. And when I go to the office, I talk, start talking about tokenization with agents and brokers and, and, and developers. They look at me like I'm crazy. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, do, do I have to wait three to five years before they, you know, I'm proven right? Truth, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, right. it's, it's kind of like opportunity zones, you know, opportunity zones where the program came out and it was great and some people knew about it and, and they loved it. But it took a period of time for people to realize what it really was. And once they did and once they saw the potential and once there was a history of projects that were done in opportunity zones, now, boom, everybody wants to hop on that wagon. I think yeah. a blockchain and real estate tokenization, syndication, all of that stuff will happen along the same way because now you have younger people who are learning it without knowing the old way, but this is the only way, and now there'll be a lot more interest in it in two to three mm -hmm. years. It'll boom. It'll go crazy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, John, you know, another, another misconception a lot of people have, they always tell me this, too. They, they say, you know, oh, Ron, you're so into blockchain, but, you know, what about the ICOs, these initial coins? Well, they're all blockchain. You know, they're all blockchain. They're all a scam. So, so uh, you know, what's going on with that? And, and uh, you know, I mean, do people say that to you, too? Or do, you, do you get that, that kind of a, of, a, of a backlash on this stuff? Uh, yes, less, less now because to the boom in 2017 that's starting to fade that fade away that that ico craze so it's a little bit less less than that it's more like stos and and uh and tokenization uh, uh yeah that that's more more on the on the tips of the tongue. one of the things that i just want to share with you is we were talking earlier i just moved to south florida right and i'm meeting a lot of people making friends and and, and meeting some business associates but the new people i meet every day on the street, like a real estate agent, for example, uh, just two days ago who I met in my building here. 
uh, they always ask me, well, what do you do? I said, well, uh, I work in real estate. I work in the real estate industry. I'm, oh, okay. And I think I'm an agent. But, and they said, well, what do you do? Well, I say, well, you know, I, I, I'm a real estate technology advisor and business development consultant. I go, oh, okay. And then I, I always ask this question. Well, do you know what blockchain is? And Ron, you just said, they get a fuzzy look on their face. I, this is the yeah. truth. They have a funny look on their face. Blockchain? <laughs> no. So, <laughs> the, new, the new language. Right, right. So then, then I have to, in a 30-second elevator talk, uh, speech, I have to explain what it is uh, to them because otherwise. Right, right. Yeah, and, uh, and you, have to say, you have to say stuff like, you know, you should talk to my friends who well, 20 years ago I told them about the Internet. They thought I was crazy too. So there you go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But but you know, but getting back to these ICOs, I, I think the big difference between that is the the ICO is just there was nothing behind it. It was just like you know, Ron, I'm going to start up the Ron fund and make five million dollars and then go to Switzerland. At least with these tokenization problems, they're all backed by an asset, right? There's something there uh, that's real, and plus you have to get the SEC uh, uh, approval for it, right? Yeah, that makes it a little bit more legit, a lot more legitimate. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But yeah, when we talk about ICOs. There's still a lot of companies and startups that are that are throwing up throwing up a web page, landing page. They're throwing up a white paper, and they're throwing out a concept that, and all three aren't fully developed. And so there's a, still a lot of uh, startups who screw up the the, uh, the 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 hype in the industry. They they, keep, they add to the hype in the industry when they when when they when they start little companies who are, which are not fleshed out properly, don't have the right team in place, uh, or, or, or legal team or, or the financial in place as well to move it forward. So a lot of little mm-hmm. companies like that clogging up the system. Yeah. And because yeah. of those kind of companies, because of what's happening with them, you then in come the, the scammers and, and the, the bad influence that take advantage of the, of the poor guy that, you know, thinks he knows it and thinks he can do it and thinks he's got it under control. He gets, influenced by these bad players and then that leads to uh well maybe blockchain and tokens and all of that really is just a scam and there's nothing behind it because that's the stories they hear about instead of the stories that are successful because those companies have advisors consultants attorneys cpas marketers, which is most important, marketing everything, and, and they have a team that's helping them take them into success instead of the guy who thinks he knows everything and gets taken by the hackers. Yeah, exactly. uh, And that that's happens exactly. all the time with a new thing. Yes. Right. Oh, that, that's right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so what we're talking about, the, the, the truth of blockchain, and the truth is that it does work uh, in real estate, and one of the components of blockchain that I think is really interesting, tokenization in particular in real estate, is they have something called the uh, smart contracts. Uh, can you can you elaborate on that a little bit and what they do? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So smart contracts are, are, are essentially a software program, a software-driven uh, uh, contract that is if, if, then, what. Uh, so it may ride on the rails of the blockchain. Ethereum's, Ethereum, the blockchain Ethereum, is, is, was built essentially to run smart contracts. With smart contracts, you can get a lot done in terms of, um, of a, a transaction or where someone needs to be paid. And so, for example, I'll give you an example. In the construction industry, smart contracts would be great because then when, a, when, a, when the contract, subcontractor finishes laying the floor, wants to get paid on the blockchain, he can submit evidence that it's been done, and the smart contract will trigger payment once it's been verified that it's been done. They don't have to go through uh, writing checks out and, and all those sorts of things, uh, legacy systems to get paid. Uh, smart contracts will also be used, and I believe, heavily in uh, blockchain for real estate transactions where, let's say, um, you're, you're buying a property, you're on chain, you make a deposit, that triggers something. The deposit trigger triggers something, uh, and uh, through a smart contract, you can get the receipt that the deposit was made. That triggers uh, another series of steps in the process, um, and then once uh, uh, the balance is paid into it, then a smart contract can can uh, help. Uh, it, it will trigger payments to the appraiser, to the roof inspector, to the agents for their commissions. And it triggers 
these types of things. So a con smart contract is basically a coded uh, type of, of a legal contract that is on-chain and it's coded. There's no attorneys involved in notaries. Right. It happens, it it happens regardless. Right. It happens right. regardless. It, it rides on the rails of blockchain. Yes. Okay. So, so when you have a, a tokenization or a project that's tokenized, how does the value of the token go up or down? Oh, there, there are different ways that can happen. Um, I think it depends. I'll give you an example. Um, I, uh, there's a company that uh, I mentioned is a blockchain white label company that is doing a, a, a offering tokenization for, for, for projects. Uh, their platform, but what they're doing, this is give you a really good example. They're, they're tokenizing or looking to tokenize land in Wyoming. Now, Wyoming has a lot of unused land, but out there, they're starting to turn this land into solar farms. So Wyoming landowners are looking at tokenizing the land in their solar farms. And what are they, what, what are they going to be fractionalizing or, or tokenizing? What, what, what are they be creating tokens on? They're going to be creating tokens either on the land itself, which could be, you know, square meter or an acre, uh, just fractions, or they could be tokenizing the revenue that, of the, on the sale of the energy that it's, that it's going to be uh, bringing, the solar energy that's being sold. So uh, I think they're looking to actually tokenize uh, the revenue streams that are coming out of a solar farm and uh, having investors buy. And what they need is, is the money to build a solar farm, so they will tokenize uh, – the land and the solar farm to bring in the investors. The investors will be rewarded with these tokens uh, uh, from the energy from from the energy sale stream mm -hmm. stream of uh, uh, sales. Um, now getting back to the land, the land could increase in value as well. So there might be a, a capital gain there. But it's uh, I think it's probably better said for a commercial building where uh, it, it's being tokenized. The, the value of, of your token can increase when rents increase. When the value of the building increases, there's a new valuation that, that says it's uh, uh, valued at X amount. Your your token then increases by that capital that, or that increase in value of the building. Uh, so I think those are a couple of examples where your, your right. value of your token can go up or down. Yeah. So so this this token uh, token value is based on the same principles of of you know regular real estate then as far as the value goes, right? I mean that's that's the way it's valued to begin with. You raise raise rents here. Your apartment building becomes more valuable, right? Same, same kind of thing. Essentially, yes. It, yeah. Essentially, yes. But it it, well, it, 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 it it becomes it becomes very electronic <laughs> with, with the chain on chain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then uh, you know another uh, I guess truism that we need to talk about that a lot of people don't understand is is this whole idea behind uh, tokenization versus cryptocurrency, like cryptocurrency in general. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, these developers, people who are using real estate tokens, they're doing it obviously to raise money and to provide their investors with theoretical liquidity. They don't ever expect you to take your token over to Starbucks and say, here, I want three coffees, right? I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, you know, I, I just to finish the course with MIT. It's a, a course on, there's a deep, uh, there's, a, there's the school, uh, Sloan School of Business Technology. And we took a big, deep, deep, a big dive into what makes a what makes a, a currency uh, a currency. Uh, and most cryptocurrencies aren't currencies because they, they are not quite used yet for, for to to purchase things. Uh, you, know, you can't right. like you can't use Bitcoin to buy a cup of coffee. Really, it, it, the cost of it is, is immense, and, um, it, and and it hasn't entered mainstream yet in terms of people using Bitcoin or or, or others, I guess for. Or retail purchases, although there's a lot of companies out there that say they accept they accept it. I think these companies, retailers that say we accept Bitcoin, it's sort of a, it's kind of the riding on the hype. It's sort of a promo, uh, you know, really. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because I don't think that the, the, the mechanism is, even if it's been created, I, it, it's not – fine-tuned yet enough to be able to use a cryptocurrency in an everyday exchange of of money for for some type of item or or goods or whatever the the mechanism to make that happen isn't refined yet exactly, exactly. and that makes it yeah. difficult right very right. difficult exactly. yeah. yes yeah 
Yeah. You know, and another aspect of this too, that's just kind of interesting is from a real estate perspective, only real estate, does the speed on the blockchain make a difference? Um, like, like the processing power of the blockchain. A lot of people say, oh, it'll never catch on for credit cards because you'll be swiping too many cards. It just oh. can't do the transactions. It doesn't make a difference in real right. estate, does it? Well, there's two issues here. One is interoperability of blockchains to interoperate with other systems, but the other one is, is the scalability, I think, is what you're talking about. I mean, Visa, uh, I don't know how many millions of transactions they can do a second, but it's pretty high. Uh, yeah. and, and <laughs> yes. it's, the blockchains are not near that yet, so that's a scalability problem without a doubt. So that, that, that's, a problem. that's a challenge, I should say, that needs to be overcome with increased yeah. uh, work. And, and one okay. thing about blockchain, especially when you're talking about smart contracts and that um, it pretty much is eliminating a lot of, of um, professionals. You know, if you don't need the attorney or you don't need the real estate agent or you don't need, you know, these various people who are always part of any kind of real estate transaction and they, they're replaced by a smart contract that automatically – does things that are necessary just because something is triggered to make it happen, that, that's a challenge as well. Well, I think that's, uh, Ron and, and Vicki, I think that's part of the hype issue. Um, I, I talk to people who, who kind of know what blockchain is, and they say, well, it's, it's going to get rid of tele insurance companies, it's going to get rid of attorneys, it's going to get rid of the real estate agents, uh, it's going to get rid of all the intermediaries, and, and maybe in the future, It'll happen, I don't think for decades, but I think slowly the intermediaries will need to adapt. Okay, I think exactly. we'll always have title insurance. It's not going to be replaced, right. but the title insurance companies are going to need to uh, embrace blockchain in order to fulfill, uh, improve their efficiencies. Um, and so, and some of these other attorneys, I think they will go by the wayside if you have, but not completely because you need attorneys always to help write the, 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 the legal uh, narrative for these smart contracts. Uh, notaries I can see being eliminated quite easily because you don't need a, you know, you're really not going to need a notary to witness uh, exactly. a, um, a signature. Uh, escrow, uh, an escrow department in a title, with a title company or escrow agencies I think will be hit pretty hard because that will be, all be done on chain. You don't need to go have an escrow officer get involved. It'll be on chain, right? In use with a smart contract. So, uh, I think the intermediaries will be impacted, uh, and I, I think the fear of these people losing their professions and jobs in the near future is is is, is pretty far far fetched. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, John. I've got about I've got a list of about eight people that I want to get rid of. Lose them. <laughs> I don't think you're going to lose them, or or they're going to go by the wayside so much as. They need to adapt with their day. They might be doing this, this, and this, but in in the future they'll be doing that, that, and that, and they just have to be able to know how to adapt into a new, uh, uh, using their expertise in a different way. And, yeah, and the smaller yeah. parts of the transaction are going to be impacted because you don't need to hire your attorney to walk your deed over to the recorder to get it recorded and stamped for you. Yeah, uh, Vicky, I always say that real estate agents uh, will not be replaced by technology. Real estate agents will <laughs> no, be, repl they will be replaced them. by they will be replaced by agents, real estate agents who don't have technology. So the real estate agents and technology bundled together will, will keep them in that will keep them working. I think, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, look, there's another truth for sure. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you, you something. You still have to One look industry, and see and touch. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'll tell you what, what, what industry I'd like to see disintermediated quicker than, than we'd like are the ones who transfer monies for us. Uh, I remember I, I worked and lived in Brazil, and I was being paid by a Western Union by a company in Italy who I was advising a, a, on a project, and I'd have to uh, go down to the Western Union to pick up the money, and there, I, he'd have to pay a fee to send it to me. And I'd have to pay, pay a fee to Western Union to pick it up. That, that, exactly. That's horrible. That is horrible. Uh, also, international wire transfers uh, or even national wire transfers 
uh, buying a property and sending uh, uh, money to, let's say, Brazil. Let's say you're buying a property down there, which I'm doing. I have to uh, use a bank here, and they're going to charge me money, uh, a fee to do that. It was $50 in, the, in this particular instance. Uh, and then the, on the other end, they have to pay a fee to pick it up, the money once it's wired to the other bank. I, I'm purchasing a property in Brazil, and you won't believe this. The down payment for my bank went through two intermediaries, two international banks. In order to, oh to, to wire the money down, and that has to that has to go away. It should be peer to peer. I should be able to send my deposit directly to the real estate developer, in one straight so line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, be, you know, you're right about that. Yeah. Yep. There might be some gas. It would kind of be like like it would kind of be like approaching Nirvana if we could live in a fee free society. <laughs> well. Well. Uh, it would be. Let's see what happens with that. Easier. Right, It'll exactly. Well, <laughs> well, you know, John, John, we've talked about a lot of the challenges and risks with uh, blockchain implementation, and I know that you use it a lot with your uh, land registry and the time we tokenization, timeshares, et cetera. We talked a little about that uh, as well. But, yeah. uh, you know, there's also a lot of resources out there for blockchain, and I think you're part of a lot of associations, right? I, I'm part of uh, – there, there are many organizations and associations out there that are somehow related to crypto, crypto and blockchain, or, or blockchain. Uh, I belong to three that, are, that pertain, uh, uh, pertain to me in my, my profession. Yeah. So there's three that are very special for me. Okay. All right. Great, great. Uh, do, do you want to mention those or you want to shout out for that or – yeah, yeah, I, I would. Uh, in 2017, I joined a, a new association called the Government Blockchain Association, which is based in Washington, D.C., GBA, Government Blockchain Association. It's a nonprofit based in D.C. Uh, and they have uh, chapters and work, different working groups. They have chapters all over the world. They have different working groups working on a lot of aspects uh, of government services, such as healthcare, care, cybersecurity, uh, you know, uh, the aerospace industry, you name it. Whatever government does – there's a, a committee or a working group that addresses that. And uh, one, one of the working groups I belong to and I chair is the uh, GBA uh, land titling working group. And uh, we're do, working on some initiatives where we're going to try and do a pilot program with the, G, with the GBA's blockchain uh, with a land registry office, hopefully in the next uh, two months. So that's one that, uh, that, I, that I work with quite closely. And that one is, uh, but, but the GBA, I must say, is, it covers a lot of different industries. My, my little world is the land registry, which is, of course, a government, uh, land, well, title recording is a government, government service. Uh, another one I belong to is called uh, FIBRI, uh, strange acronym, but it's the Foundation for International Blockchain and Real Estate Expertise. Uh, it's a nonprofit based in the Netherlands. Uh, I'm a member of the, member of the board, and uh, I'm the chair of FIBRI's uh, um, uh, working group, uh, land registry working group, I should say. And I also opened up a chapter, in, uh, a fiber chapter in Miami uh, just uh, about six weeks ago after moving down here. Uh, Fibre is dedicated to 110% real estate and blockchain. It's an educational group, and it's a networking group for professionals in that industry or people who are interested in it. And uh, uh, so we, we, we do a lot of webinars, uh, which are similar to your podcast because we're, we're, we're educating people on real estate and the various aspects of blockchain and real estate. And the third one, real quick, is uh, one that's based actually in uh, Belgium, Brussels, Belgium. It's, the acronym is INATSPA, the International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications. We got a nonprofit. Uh, it was a spin-off, or it was launched by the European Commission in, in the European Union. And their, their focus, INATSPA's focus is on interoperability and standardization of blockchain across uh, all industries across the world. And uh, they also have working groups. And uh, believe it or not, I'm the chair of the Real Estate Land Registry sub-working group for, for, for NAPA. Uh, we do similar things. We, we do webinars to educate people. I have on my panels, I have professionals who are either work in land registry, advise, or uh, who are legally involved and so forth. Uh, so that's a, a, also the third group that sort of spins in my, my world spins around me with <laughs> yeah. uh, profession. Well, yeah. well oh, Vicky, Vicky, this is why all this education, et cetera, that we're bringing in this pocket, this is why people have to contact John for all this blockchain stuff. He, right? Doesn't that make sense? 
Absolutely, it makes sense because there's too yeah. much disinformation. <laughs> there's too much people, too many people in the world who think that blockchain and Bitcoin is the same thing and the only thing out there. And and we need people like John to educate these uninformed folks that blockchain can turn your life around in better ways especially with real estate at this point in time. But, yes, absolutely, Ron. People need to contact you know, we, John and get the, get him to help them to see the possibilities for their future. We, we started off this podcast with a line from A Few Good Men, that whole, you know, you can't handle the truth. And now we have to listen to this podcast, doing this podcast. I feel like we should use another line saying, you know, we need John on that wall. You want John on that blockchain <laughs> wall. So there we go. Absolutely. John, Absolutely. John how, do, how, do, how do people get a hold of you? What's the best way? I think by email, it's actually not. Let me spell that out for you. It's my first little initial J, last name Marcunas, J-M-A-R-K-U-N-A-S, at, this is easy, powerofchain.com. J Marcunas at powerofchain.com. That's the, my, uh, my, my uh, email for my little company, Power of Chain. I'm always happy to talk about blockchain. I'm always happy to, to to chat about issues with it uh, anytime. So it's it's uh, I'm one one source I guess out of many around the world that that uh, uh, people can turn yeah. to whether you're a consumer or a business. Excellent, excellent. We want and, to thank you for your also, time today. It's yeah. also and Vicky, important to. Well, I was what I was going to say is it's it's important. There's a lot of people who talk a lot of stuff, but you have to know who you're talking to so that you can rely on what they're telling you. And John is someone you can rely on to tell you the truth, to tell you the reality, and to tell you whether your idea or your concept is going to actually be viable at this point in time on the blockchain, and then he will help you to make it happen, make it a reality, yeah. and, you know, what more could you want? But absolutely, you can rely on his information and his expertise. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. John, John, you listen. You listen to a lot of our podcasts. You ever notice that Vicky likes to get the last word in all the time? Isn't that funny? I, I noticed that. You know, <laughs> you're, you're up against something that I can't handle. <laughs> but that's because I have right. a woman's prerogative. <laughs> all right. All right. Well. Let's close this out right now. It was a great podcast, great information. John, thanks so much for being a guest on the show. And Vicki, thanks for co-hosting. It was a lot of fun. And folks, you're listening to the Mappable USA podcast at mappableusa.com. If you go to that website, scroll down the homepage, you'll see all our syndication sources. Just pick the one you like best and subscribe, and you'll never miss another one of our episodes. If you want to be a guest on the show like John was, there's a guest tab there. Click on that, fill out the form. We'll see what we can do about getting you on the show. And if you like what you heard today, Send us an email at info at mappableusa.com or just leave a comment on whatever page you're listening to this on right now. So thanks for listening. Thanks for your support. And we'll be at you next time with another Mappable USA podcast. Have a great week, everyone.